Happy Sunday, everybody. Today's short film is Frankie. It's a gripping prime detective sci-fi thriller about time travel. The film is directed by Mike Papa of Crimson Man. If you like this short, you will also enjoy The Lazy Boy, Lifeline, Salesman Pete, and Defective Detective. Stick around for a film recap, and here is Frankie.
So is Frankie stuck in some sort of a time paradox loop where he continuously comes back and he adds to the plot of his own creation? In any case, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this film and thanks so much for tuning in for a quick film recap. Before we get into the movie, make sure you click that like button, click that bell to get notified of the new videos and subscribe. And now let's continue into the deep dive about Frankie, written and directed by Mike Papa. So the synopsis goes like this. When a watch repairman acquires a watch that can control time, he decides to use it to achieve his dreams. His plan soon becomes sinister as he learns that he isn't the only one that knows about the existence of the watch. This is yet another award-winning masterpiece by director Mike Papa. Uh, previously, we've screened The Crimson Men, and this film, in my opinion, takes it to the next level simply because there's absolutely no dialogue. When I think of silent films, I think of movies like Charlie Chaplin. However, in Frankie, you feel completely immersed in the story that eventually leads you into the completely confusing ending. So in my opinion, Frankie really traveled back in time only to kill and murder his own self, thinking it was somebody else. So the main character is Quirky, he's a lonely guy, he goes to work, on his spare time he's trying to win a science competition, he comes across this watch and he wants to make his dad proud, that's where we're seeing all the newspaper clippings, I guess, of his father, so he's living in his father's shadow, I am assuming, and so when he finds this watch, the first thing on his mind is to, oh, I want to prove uh, myself to my father uh, and make him proud. I don't know about you guys, but is that the first thing that would be on your mind when you found a time travel device to win a science fair competition. Uh, there's some nostalgic sort of elements in here and I'm thinking that's what Mike was going for. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not, let me know what you think. Now in terms of plot, I'm gonna sort of leave it up to you guys to let me know what you think of the plot. There's some confusing parts in there for me. Pretty sure it was him in the end who murdered himself. I just don't understand uh, the connection of the, uh, the sort of the villain character who comes in and asks about the watch. I don't know how he's connected into this whole thing, so if you guys want to share some light on it, I would really highly appreciate it. Let me know if you agree or if you disagree, or if there's a different take on it. Frankie is played by an actor called Ian Cheehy, and he gives a really nice quirky performance that sort of leads the right pace for the film. And Ian definitely looks like Kip from Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon, don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. Besides, we both know I'm training to become a cage fighter. His character is hugely reminiscent to a couple of other shorts that I'm going to list in the description. The RCG animated one is Salesman Pete. Way to go, Pete. Everything in Pickle City is back to normal. Peaceful and quiet. The other one is Defective Detective. You also have Hambuster. And if you want a quirky sort of a film that's very reminiscent to time travel as well, check out The Lazy Boy, which we released not too long ago by Dave Redman.
So the character is sort of quirky and cartoonish in a way. That's why I mentioned the earlier CG films. It also reminds me of the French and Italian cinema of the, like, the 1950s to the 1970s. The Italian job sort of movies. Now in terms of the film itself, superb film. Cinematography is really good just as it was in The Crimson Man. Great camera work. The editing is clean. The story is gripping. The acting is fantastic considering there's absolutely no dialogue by any of the characters. I don't know about you guys, but I really did enjoy the nine dialogue approach to this film created through the intense violin soundtrack that played throughout the movie. If you're wondering, the sound editor was Michael Kurihara, and the music was performed by Christian Amanor. The atmosphere and the mood is very thrilling and suspenseful. That's sort of created through the stark lighting. The editing is quick, very smart. The story is simply told, and in the end, the film is just captivating. All in all, it's a great watch. I, I hope you enjoyed it. When it comes to time travel movies, I find all these endings very sort of confusing. So this is why I would love to interview Mike Papa about this film, so leave your questions below. I like time travel stories that respect the Novikov self-consistency principle, basically meaning that we cannot alter an event after it already happened, so things just sort of kind of stay consistent. But for cinema, this is fun to watch, and I hope you enjoyed it. And that's my two cents on the film. And as always, I pass off the question to you. Let me know what you think of the film, the plot. Are there any time travel loopholes that Mike Papa has missed? And leave your comments below so we can ask the director when we interview them. As you guys know, we do interview the directors of these films. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them so when we interview them, they can answer them. Huge shout out to director Mike Papa and the entire production staff on this film. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you haven't already, check out the community tab. That's where we're posting the latest and the greatest and we're digging up films from our archive for your enjoyment. So click that bell, subscribe, enjoy the rest of the weekend, and I'll see you guys on the next one.